What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to another episode. Um, took a little bit of a break uh, for 4th of July weekend, uh, did some family stuff, did a little bit of traveling, uh, but we're back in the spray booth, and today we're gonna talk mini guns and specific mini gun that I've been using for a little bit, and I really enjoy using it, so I figured I would share with you guys what the whole point of a mini spray gun is, um, who should consider buying one of these, which ones to look at, uh, because there, there are a ton of options. Um, and the one that I'm gonna talk about today, is this little guy right here, see if I can get it to focus. This is the Segola Mini Extreme. Mine has a, let's see if I can get it, focus, mini EPA air cap, and a 1.0 fluid set in it. What I've been using this for is P30 primer, which if you know P30 primer, you know smaller nozzle sizes, that primer just loves small nozzles. Uh, so I've been using it for that. And I've been using it for things like this job here, which is kind of like a spot repair. I'm just doing the lower section on either side of this bumper cover. Um, and then, so basically what I'll do is run you guys through every step of the way from sealing, I'm gonna seal these two ends to blending my base coat out and I'll even clear coat with this thing. Um, Lately, I've been using it without a regulator. I will put a regulator on so I can show you guys. I'll show you the fan pattern. Um, the big benefit, and I'll start right out of the gate with these mini guns, especially with this air cap, is the air consumption. So if you guys have smaller air compressors in your garage, a Harbor Freight air compressor with decent filtration will run this. And you guys could get away with painting, you know, little small spot repairs. You could probably paint a fender with this. Um, it would be a little bit slow because it is, it is a mini gun. It's not gonna have full, full size gun speed, but you can do it. If you pick your products right, you could do it with one of these. Um, but this uses right about six and a half CFM cubic feet per minute or 190 liters per minute. Um, and that's, I mean, that's incredibly low. And RP, like SADA RP is going to be Shoot, I want to say like 13 to 16, somewhere in that range. Uh, my Fuji spray MP is like 10 and a half. So this is considerably lower than a full size spray gun. I know Eastwood sells a really low CFM full size gun, which maybe one day I'll try to get my hands on one of those and do a review. But I wanted to show you guys this because these are incredibly handy, especially if you're just at home working with a small compressor. And even for somebody like me, who's a professional doing this in a big paint booth, these are really nice because they give you a ton of control um, and just keep color nice and tight, makes it really easy to blend. And yeah, so we'll, we'll go ahead. I'm gonna get this just wiped down and cleaned. I'll go mix up a little bit of sealer and I'll show you guys like all the way through sealing, blending color, clearing it, all with this little mini spray gun. I will put a regulator on it too. So just give me a minute. I'll go get everything clean, mixed up, and we'll get into this. All right, guys, as you can see, we're at the pattern wall now. Uh, I've just got masking paper on this wall. It's just where I check my spray pattern. Um, I have sealer loaded up in this little gun. Um, I'm gonna run it at about 20 PSI, full fan, full fluid. Um, and what I mean by that is my fan is wide open. Fluid is all the way as open as I can make it. I'm gonna set it at 20, uh, let's go like 25. Okay, so notice this fan, it is small. Clearly, this is a mini gun. It's a small oval, very similar to the uh, 3300 GTO. It's very, very, very similar pattern. It's just on a smaller scale, which is why a mini gun is more controlled. So with that, demonstration we're gonna take you over to the bumper cover I'm gonna get sealer on these two bumper ends and show you how nice and tight I can keep this um, I'm just gonna do a single coat of sealer on the ends, and then I'll go mix up some color and we'll get into the whole thing all right guys so we're at the bumper I used UV primer on this repair so that's why it looks transparent because it is um, I'm gonna just do a single coat of this with the mini gun to keep it as small as I can on this side. Very, very nice to have something so controlled. Single coat, I'm not gonna go for super coverage on this. I can still see through it, but it's fine. It's nice and smooth. I'll bring you guys in after I do the other side. 
All right, and here's the other side. I think it's worth mentioning that this is a rental car, so it's kind of one of those things where they want stuff done as quickly as they can get it. And spot repairs are a lot of times the answer. All right, there. There we go. All right, hold up and I'll bring you in. All right, so can you guys see how smooth that sprayed? Gonna see, get to the other side. And you can see that you can still kind of see through it. That's all right. I just want to keep this nice and tight. I'm going to go mix up some color and we'll get into blending that with this mini gun. All right guys, so our sealer is dry to the touch. I'm going to retack this really quick. I have base coat mixed up. And we're just going to get some base on this. Um, and I'm, I am going to go over these chips. Basically what I'm going to do here is I'm avoid this area where it meets the fender. Uh, just because that way I can ensure that I'm actually blended out and I know that this matches the car. So I'm gonna keep it just over the chips because this bumper being a rental car, she's pretty chipped up and I figure I might as well get color on all of the chips as well. Um, but if you wanted to just stay tight down here, this spray gun just helps you. It's a smaller pattern, so it's really easy to control where your base lands. I'll show you that now even though I'm going to spray the upper part of this as well, I'll show you how nice and tight you can keep this. All right, so if you were to just do this section, watch this. Okay. Super soft, controlled pattern. I'm d I would do a reverse blend so my, my end is right about here, and then I would step it in, and my next coat would be here, and I would be covered and ready to clear. So super versatile for people that really want to do like spot repairs or even mobile. You could get a small enough compressor in a van and run this spray gun all day, no problem. Um, but as I mentioned, I'm going to go ahead and hit these chips. I'm just going to stay away from this end. Let's go ahead. Get a little bit of base cut on all these chips. This thing, you could just tell that it's been uh, used and abused, but that's all right. Yeah, just brushing it up a little bit, like so. And I'm gonna do two coats on these, just because it's like I'm just. This is kind of a courtesy, just to make sure that the chips have some paint in them, so they don't stand out. The bumper is pretty hammered, but we'll make it look as nice as possible. Let's go to the other side and let's do that. All right, same thing on this side. Keep this tight. And I am using uh, Sherwin Ultra 9K waterborne base coat. I've got this all based out. I'm gonna go ahead, I gotta go in the mix room and grab my, uh, my little fan blower. Get this dehydrated, bring you guys back for coat two. These guns, man, like you could spray anything out of this. I'm gonna clear with it as well. So we'll get clear on this. But for right now, I'll go get my dryer, get this blown off, and I'll bring you back for round two. And we should only need one more coat and we're good to go. I'll dehydrate it, let it sit 10, 15 minutes, fully just get all of those, I was, actually, I was about to say solvent, get all of that water dehydrated out of it. All right, so single coat's on. I'm gonna go grab my fan jet blower, get this all blown down, get it dehydrated. I'm probably only gonna need one more coat after this. Uh, this waterborne base coat covers really well. Even over those chips, it covered pretty dang good. So I'll go get that, bring you guys back for round two. All right, so we're all good and dry here. I'm gonna go ahead and lay on my second coat. And I did turn my pressure up right about two bar, 30 PSI. That's about the maximum, at least that's what the maximum on Segola's website recommends for this spray gun. I find that it does spray pretty decent at like 35 as well. 30 is just a nice wet, even pattern. So that's 20 for sealer, 25 for sealer, 30 for base coats, 30 for clear coat. Seems to work really nice for me. 
go ahead and get my second coat on here. Thinking that this is going to be the last coat. I'm gonna spray this one kind of wet. Get my nice coverage. Get some over these chips. As I mentioned, this is rental car stuff, so it's ideally it's like if this is a customer car, we would offer to fix these chips, but being a rental car, they don't want to pay for that. But somebody is going to buy this one day, so I always try to take that into consideration when I'm painting these. Because this is going to be someone's car someday, I want it to at least look nice, you know. Because basically I know that they don't care. They just want the car back on the road, but I care enough about what I'm doing that I'm gonna, you know, it only takes a couple, couple uh, ounces of base coat. I already had this color mixed up from previous, so. Ooh. All right. And it's gonna make a world of difference. I know when this thing goes back together, it'll look better than being all skipped up. All right, there's my my blend all finished everything is covered chips look nice and they're at least covered and now we're uh gonna dehydrate this i'll probably set, set the blower on the stand there let some air roll over this get it good and dry before i go and clear coat this uh but really it's that easy so so if any of you guys are say mobile i know there's a lot of mobile repair techs out there check this gun out uh i've been thoroughly impressed with it uh, I haven't quite ran it on a small compressor yet. I plan to test that out. But really, if you're going to use a minigun, you're going to be using it on something small like this. And for that, it's perfect. I do have a turbine setup, which works really, really nice as well. But I'll be honest, this is a little bit faster than that using just a conventional air spray gun. Uh, and the results, I mean, it, it works fantastic. It lays the space coat down really really nice i've done metallics with it and it i mean it sprays it all really nice i'll show you what the clear coat finish is like afterwards being a 1.0 tip it's not like the fastest thing on earth but it atomizes it so fine that it just it lays down super slick super super effortless effortless effort less leave <laughs> and yeah man i i'm a big fan Big bad. I'm gonna go let this dry. I'll bring you guys back for clear coat and we'll kind of finish up and I'll show, I'll tell you my, my final thoughts on it. All right guys, so we got clear coat mixed up. Ready to just smash two coats on this and be out. Um, this clear is back to back. So I'm gonna do my first coat, come right back. Second coat, make it how I want it to look. Move on to the other side and then it air dries in like 15 minutes and I can wheel this out. Um, yeah, this, this gun is honestly perfect for this because it doesn't overload it being a 1.0. Uh, for stuff like this, it, it's pretty conservative on paint. I did mix up about seven ounces. So we'll see how much we have at the end of this. But uh, as far as paint consumption, it doesn't really use a whole lot. It really just gets it on the panel makes it kind of nice so let's go ahead i'm gonna do my first coat and like i mentioned i'm gonna go right back and do my second and then we'll go to the other side now i'm using about 33 psi just to get it on there a little bit quicker and as i mentioned it's being a 1.0 it's not the fastest spray gun on earth you see my arm speed is pretty lax Focusing on uh, overlapping and getting it on here. And I don't know if you guys could tell on the mic, but it's actually a pretty quiet spray gun as well. Alright, so there's my first coat on. Now I'm going to go right back. Second coat. Make sure my overlap is nice and tight. nice and smoothed out oh yeah this is already looking really really nice there 
check, make sure I got my coverage. Everything looks fantastic. All right, let's switch to the other side. Actually, I got one little spot. I'm glad I caught that. All right, now we're good. Let's switch to the other side. All right, same thing over here, just back-to-back -back coat. My first coat, I go a little quick. I'm just kind of doing a mid, mid-wet coat. Trying to flood too much product on here. And you can give this like a minute flash time if you want to. I like to kind of just let it sit for a second. And it starts to think about what it's doing. And then we'll get right back on. This clear holds really, really nice. So I'm not too worried about running it or anything like that it gets sticky pretty dang fast and it's pretty impressive that uh it holds the gloss that it does when you think of speed clear you really do uh think of just pinching and this clear really doesn't do that unless it gets overheated if it if it's too hot in here you don't use this clear it's only about I think it's about 75, I think is what I have the booth set to, and it's right on the money, I think. Another spot right here. Same spot I almost missed on the other side. Right there. Right there. Right there. Right there. It's so hard to see on white, man. I swear. i make sure I lay all this down really nice, you know? All right, that's it. That's job done. I'm gonna bring you guys in so you can check out the finish. All right, so here's the finish. Beautiful gloss. The other side. This side's probably already starting to tack up. That looks fantastic. It's exactly what I want. Color is spot on. That was a 040 standard. All right, let's see how much product I use. Ah, I mean, I use almost all of that i have maybe a half an ounce left so six and a half ounces is a really good guess um now my final thoughts on this little guy so i i currently have an lph 80 for my wada i have uh sri pro from the Vilvis. i love both of those guns the, the lph 80 i like more for custom work because when you dial in the fan to like a dot it's a very small dot and it's really nice to do like fade in lines and things like that with. Works pretty good for uh, doing primer and things like that as well. Um, my SRI, I really like for primer. That's my primary primer gun. Uh, but this one for spot repair. This is a, a little bit bigger and faster than those other two options. Uh, this is honestly a 4600 Extreme Little Brother. This thing, you can do, clearly, complete refinish stuff like this cover with this gun, no problem. Not an issue. Um, low air consumption, really, really, really high paint transfer rate, so you're not gonna use a ton of paint. Um, I'm really controlled. Would I use this for custom stuff? I would clear coat custom stuff with it. The dot pattern when you wind this fan all the way in, it's a little bit bigger than like an LPH-80 or an LPH-50, uh, but you could absolutely do it. It's low air consumption. If you wound your fluid in, you could dial this thing in to do custom work as well. Uh, but for somebody in my position that's doing refinishing in a spray booth, and I want to keep my material usage as low as I possibly can, this is a pretty dang good option, man. Because if I use a full-size gun, I'm going to use more paint because it's going to put it more into the air versus getting it on the panel. And clearly, even using this for clear coat, you get amazing finishes with it. Uh, so, do I think it's worth checking out? Absolutely. And this this little mini EPA cap, I'm telling you, it, it's a really soft spray pattern, but it works fantastic. I'm a really big fan of these Segola spray guns. Um, and if you guys like this video, please consider subscribing. I'm trying to get 
I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a thousand subscriber giveaway, which I'll announce here in like the next week or two. And I'll tell you all the details on that, what you need to do to get entered. But uh, I'm trying to get this channel to grow. I'm trying to show you guys a good mix of content, spray guns. Uh, we'll, we'll be doing more DIY stuff here really soon. I just signed up to rent a shop with my dad. He got the key this weekend, so I'm gonna start kind of moving a few of my tools from my house over to there so I can do side projects. Little DIY stuff on bumper covers and I don't think we're gonna do complete paint jobs in there, but it'll be a really nice place for me to show you guys how to do it in your own garage. So stay tuned for that because that is coming. I'll give you guys a shop tour here once I get stuff moved over. Uh, but yeah, I I get messages all the time about the videos that I'm making for YouTube. And I, I seriously, I appreciate the feedback, you guys. It means a lot to me. I always wanted to kind of have a YouTube channel doing like paint content. I already have a YouTube channel of just my name that's just kind of random stuff that I've put on there over the years. But it's been a lot of fun and I really, really appreciate all of the support so far. You guys are awesome. Um, if you don't already, check me out on Instagram, TikTok, it's Oli Oli Paints on both of those. Um, and yeah, until the next video, I'll see you guys next time. Thank you.